Hello, thanks very much for joining. I'm not going to charge my Tesla LFP battery to 100% anymore, and I'm going to tell you why. Well, it all started a few days ago after my last post, and it was about range degradation. Uh, and I'd noticed I'd lost six miles since I'd had the car in the maximum range when I char charged to 100%. Uh, and I worked this out, I'd done 7,700 miles. So for every 1,283 miles I did, I'd lost one mile of range. And that worked out at 2.281%. So I went straight to the manual of the, of the Tesla to see what it says. And I remember reading this when I first had the car. And it says that if your car is equipped with an LFP battery, and there's a very easy way to check if it is or not. Tesla recommends that 100% for daily use and that you also fully charge your vehicle to 100% at least once per week. So that's what I've been doing for all that time, including supercharges or wherever I go. I've charged to 100%. So I took a look to see what Tesla has to say on its websites. And it said that a Tesla after 200,000 miles should retain 90% of its original battery. And after 20,000 miles, it should only lose 1%. But clearly I had lost 2.28% uh, in only 7,700 miles uh, and not the 1% Tesla was saying in 20,000 miles. So I needed to do a lot more research on this because this was concerning because I was achieving well below what Tesla said I should do. I love the program Fully Charge and the, the following clip is uh, Rob Llewellyn and Quentin Wilson just talking about what Tesla's potentially can do. It's a great channel. If you're not subscribed, you really should be. It's excellent. So just take a quick look. Um, there are testers out there that do a million oh, miles, a million miles yeah. and, and there was a, a guy with a, a YouTube of Model 3 uh, who'd done 200,000 miles and his degradation on his battery was 8%. Right, after 200,000 miles. Yeah, and he charged on superchargers only. Right. So, yes. you know. No, and I think we now know that that technology works. And I mean, the one thing... So I came across this excellent article uh, by Christian Agati in Auto Evolutions RV Month and I've posted a link below. Christian asks in his article the puzzling reason why Tesla misleadingly recommends charging the LFP batteries to 100%. In the article he explains that when Tesla first started delivering their Teslas with LFP batteries it recommended all its customers to charge to 100%. And he asked, what was the reason behind this puzzling request? It says in the article that the lithium battery, when charged to 100% regularly, will shorten its life. The LFP battery, if you charge it to 100% regularly, will encounter range degradation. The only reason that Tesla recommends charging LF batteries to 100% is to improve the ability to accurately determine the state of charge and estimated range. For an improved state of charge estimation, you should follow the recommendations to fully charge the battery once a week. This should be done before going on a trip. The LFP batteries already have an improved life cycle, so having them fully charged once in a while will not impact on their life cycle significantly. Uh, this is the main reason Tesla opted to compromise on this, to offer a more accurate range prediction. After all, few people will complain that the car's battery did not last eight years or so, but there will be many complaints if the, the car's estimate of range left in the car is inaccurate and they run out of power. So in conclusion, Christian says that it's better to charge your battery up to 80%, but if going on a long road trip, charge it up to 100%. I mean, what I've been doing up to now is been charging to 100% all the time. I thought it was fine. Uh, and I don't need to charge up to 100%. Uh, and maybe on a road trip, I may even just go to 90%. It depends on when the next uh, charger is. 
If it's a long way, um, I might not. I might go to the 100%. But I'm certainly going to stop charging to 100% on a regular basis. I'll just go to 80%. Interested to hear what you have to say. This one was a little bit more complicated, but it's made me do a lot of research into this. It shows with a Tesla how complex it is. You think of all the cars you've driven, that you know all about it within five minutes of driving. There's only so much, isn't there? You'll become an expert, but you're learning constantly all the time with the Tesla. It's fascinating. It's a wonderful car. I love it. Having said that, even the 2.281 uh, range degradation still gives me a life of the car of 350,000 miles. I worked it out that I've lost 2.281 in 7,700 miles and I'd be at zero in 350,000 miles. But I want to do a lot better than that. Um, I'm sure you would. And I'm going to see how this goes. The problem is, of course, you don't know what your range is until you do it to fully charge. So I'm hoping that by charging up to the sort of round about the 80%, when I do go on a road trip and there's nothing really planned and it's for several months to Portugal, I left hopefully it hasn't gone down any further since then. But I'll obviously keep you posted on that. Please leave any comments uh, you have below and uh, hope you can like and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.